In good and bad news for sports fans, rugby league is back, but so are we. William, welcome. Finally, mate. It's Unfiltered. been a good break. <laughs> it's been a good break. The Brisbane Broncos signed big prop Matt Lodge, who was facing some pretty significant charges in 2015. There's been an understandable uproar about it, and there's a lot of people saying he shouldn't be playing because he doesn't deserve to. There's a lot of people saying that he has the right to play because he's followed the processes and he's a better person than what he was in those times. Now, Will, I know you had some comments to make on Twitter. Where do you stand on this whole thing? Yeah, I mean, you know, we could have done a show last week and just got on the bandwagon and just, you know, hammered, hammered Lodge like everyone else did. But, you know, I've, there's obviously two sides of the story and I just... I just tried to weigh up the whole week and how, when, how people were coming at him. I waited for him to get interviewed and, and just to see, you know, speak to Wayne Bennett about him, see what sort of person he is and people around him. And obviously he's trying to do a whole different thing with his life now. He's trying to turn his whole life around, you know, like he's, he has done a horrendous thing that no other, other rugby league player has ever done. You know, there's been rugby league players that, that, you know, that have done assault, drink driving, you know, all these kind of things. But this is, this is on another level. So you can, I can understand fully. I don't condone anything he's done. But at the end of the day, this kid, he wants a new start. He's got a new start. He went there to the Broncos in 2015. Wayne gave him a fresh start. But he's had to do all these other things behind the scenes, like uh, the mentoring roles, all these other things. He's been going to psychiatrists, psychologists. He's done a lot of things to get him back to the playing field. People just think that he's just spent his time on the sideline, done nothing, next minute he's a starting prop for Brisbane Broncos, one of the best clubs. So he has done a lot of work behind the scenes, but in saying that, I think that he should have said something early, but that's that's Wayne Bennett being Wayne Bennett. Being under the Wayne Bennett umbrella is, is a good thing. I actually think the Broncos need to take a bit of responsibility for this because yeah. What's come out now is that he has done all these things. He's been off the drip. Yeah. He's had a baby. He's done all these things. The NRL have obviously been involved in, in that process, and they've ticked him as clear to play. Yeah. Well, that's, so well, that's, the Broncos that's the thing. should have been on the front foot and said, this is what we've done, but they weren't because Wayne Bennett obviously... Well, that's, that's the thing. Wayne Bennett is, is old school, but now with, every, you know, with social media, with all the media surrounding the game, the game's worth billions of dollars, you can't just protect players like you used to. You need to go, all right, mate, face the music, and just deal with it. And they could have dealt with it about, you know, five months ago and it would have been a non-story because, believe it or not, we've got through an off-season, a pre-season without any yeah, drama. Yeah. So this got amplified times 10. Mm. And you can see why. The journos were just hunting and hunting and hunting and wanting something from Lodge, from the club, from Wayne. And I know what Wayne was like and he was just, you know, Wayne Bennett through the whole thing. And I can understand what he's like because he's old school and he protects his players. But on the other hand, I see all, all these journos coming at him and I can understand that. But even when he did do the interview, I'm not sure what they expected him to say. Hmm. He obviously doesn't remember anything. You know, he's highly influenced under alcohol, prescription drugs and whatever else is in his system. It wasn't, it wasn't a good thing. But I just think this kid, he's got, he's got the opportunity to play again from the NRL. So he's passed all these, all these things that you have to. You don't, there, there is a proce process to get to play the NRL and it is a privilege to play in the NRL mm. and people need to understand that. And I think I can tell by the, by the journalists and, and all the fans and everything like that, it's like, it doesn't seem like a privilege to play for the NRL because you've got people like Matt Lodge that oh, easily, no, but, oh, no, but I'm saying this is, from, this is from the spectators and the fans and, and from the journos. They're like, well, it mustn't be a privilege if you've got people like Matt Lodge playing. Well, rugby league loves a redemption story. I mean, yeah. Russell Packers, uh, Danny Wicks, they've both been to jail. They yeah. served their time. I think the issue for it's me... It's what he's done. Well, it's what he's done, but it's also what is the actual process? I mean, Todd Carney, mm. um, the NRL are, are sort of trying to not register his contract yeah. at the moment. Now, the last thing Todd Carney did was piss in his mouth. Now, if you take <laughs> that in comparison with a bloke going berserk yeah. in a different country, it's not even... It's, it's apples and oranges. Yeah. But saying that... Yeah. Is it because Todd Carney's a repeat offender? Is it because Matt Lodge has done the work that Todd Carney hasn't? I, I don't really yeah. understand. I, I, I think it's hard, it's hard to understand. And I've seen, um, you know, Todd, Todd Greenberg did a great interview. You know, we had yeah. four journalists around him and they were just attacking him from all angles, the, the process of what he's done and, and how, he, how is he allowed back in the game. And he explained to everyone, I'm not mm. sure what else they want. At the end of the day, I'm worried about in a couple of years, just say if we let Matt Lodge go, 
and let him go back into the streets. He showed signs of just being... Having he's problems. right on the spectrum of being, yeah. you know, that the next level sort of thing. He's, mm. he's got it in him. So I'd rather us grab him in the NRL fraternity and just turn him into a better human being because I don't want to see Matt yeah, Lodge, ex-footballer, kills family or, or does something stupid to himself or Matt Lodge commits suicide because we've just neglected him. Mm. You know, like it could, be, it could be a great story of him, a, a redemption story. He ends up playing for the Broncos all year. He ends up playing some great football and he's mentoring young kids and people can look at him as, as a role model because he has stuffed up like no other player has. And I just don't want to see the, ex the extreme that, th that this guy can go to. I would imagine that he would have written in his contract, not necessarily that. I mean, I know that he's not drinking and that probably sounds like he's got a big do not drink on his forehead anyway, but he would have those things written in his contract. And if he stuffs up, then he'd be oh. out. So he would be aware this is his last chance. I mean, there's no more chances walking through a saloon door when you've done what he's done. So no, and, and, I, and I, hear, I hear good things coming out of coming out of the Broncos. What he's doing with the young mm. kids, and they try and use him as an example. And he and and he should really embrace that. The NRL, the RLPA. We had Clint Newton on here about a month ago, and the game has a responsibility to rehabilitate players and to give them a second chance. And I just think this is a perfect opportunity. You know, we've had the, the good stories like the Russell Packers and the Danny Wicks. You know, they've come back and they've played, the, played in the NRL. They've been better people, better human beings, and they've better themselves. You know what I mean? So I just think with Matt Lodge, he has probably done the biggest fuck up in NRL history that I can actually recall. And um, I think he deserves another chance.